Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. All right, so listen, it is the first full day of fall, and it sure feels like fall outside, even though it kind of looks like summer out there as we give you a live look. The sun is shining, but the cooler temperatures are sticking around as we head into the weekend. And listen, we even dropped a degree in the time that I started talking because we were at 60 degrees and here we are at 59. Just in a matter of seconds. Mm -hmm. But we're warmer than we were this morning, Brandon, when we started true. off in the 40s. Right, mm -hmm. 30s in some communities like uh, Monroe, we saw 30s up in Flint, Lapeer. So it's been a 20 degree rebound just since about 7 a.m. Good Friday afternoon. We have middle upper 50s to near 60 degrees. And we'll get into the middle 60s today. Auto show, high school football, outdoor plans. Best today. We are tracking a little weekend wet weather. Winds are coming down from the north. We're getting a little bit of uh, cloud cover uh, off of Lake Huron, mainly southern Ontario. However, we'll get a few more clouds still through the rest of the afternoon. Brighter and less windy than yesterday. Our first full day of fall, 66 degrees this afternoon. It'll be increasing clouds later tonight ahead of some weekend showers, but lower 60s kick off for your high school football, falling into the 50s, so you'll definitely want that jacket. New details on this monster storm, Fiona. We'll have it coming up, plus details on your weekend rain. All right, Brandon, thank you. We'll check in with you shortly. In just a few hours, we're going to know whether professors at Eastern Michigan University have agreed to a new contract. Or not. Voting ends today on that deal that brought an end to a strike just as school got started. Nick Monticelli joins us with the looming results and what may happen next. Good afternoon. I spoke to the union representing the tenured and tenure track professors. They say that they expect to have the results of their vote by early this evening. So, you know, about four, five, six hours from now, we should know what's going on. Settle the damn contract! Today, we will know if the contract really is settled. After a strike, then a tentative contract deal at Eastern Michigan University, tenured and tenured track professors began voting on the proposed contract this week. Professors were demanding better pay to help offset inflation and health care costs. The administration has just been stonewalling us the whole time in order to try to force us to what amount to pay cuts. And that's all that is to it. You know, I mean, they're offering us 2% pay raises at a time when inflation is 9%. The university countered, saying rising health care costs are something everyone is dealing with. And now there appears to be a deal. In the first year, a 4% raise or $4,000 whichever is larger, then 3.5% in year two and another 3.5% in year three. Then they'll reopen discussions to determine raises for the fourth year. Let me lay out the scenarios for you. If these professors approve the contract, that's it. We won't be talking about this for another couple of years, three or four years, actually. If not, there's two other options. They could just go back to the bargaining table or they could strike again. I'm Nick Monticelli, Local 4. All right, Nick, thank you. Right now, police in Gibraltar are continuing to ask for help after a child was nearly kidnapped. The incident happened on Wednesday night at around 930 near Gibraltar's community park, and a woman told police that she was pushing her child in a stroller when a black SUV pulled up alongside of them. She says that two men in their 30s wearing all black then got out of the SUV and tried to grab her child in the stroller. When they weren't successful, the two men then drove away. In Macomb County now, deputies say a man was attacked by a woman with a machete this morning. Deputies say the man was riding his bike to work when a 28-year-old woman came up to him and assaulted him with a machete-style weapon. This happened on Gratiot and Church Streets in Mount Clements. Several people we've learned called 911. Investigators found the woman with the weapon on her. The man was taken to the hospital where he's being treated for non-life-threatening injuries. The sheriff, sheriff's office is investigating the circumstances. Lawyers for former President Trump faced a new deadline set by the special master reviewing documents seized from his Mar-a-Lago home. The judge says that Trump attorneys have one week to back up their claim the FBI planted evidence during the August search. Chris Perlone is on Capitol Hill with the new details. 
The special master appointed to review thousands of documents confiscated from Donald Trump's Florida estate is essentially challenging the former president to make his public claims of planted evidence official by submitting them to the court. Ever since the FBI searched his Mar-a-Lago resort looking for classified government documents last month, former President Donald Trump has insinuated several times without providing proof that federal agents might have planted evidence in his home. The problem that you have is they go into rooms, they won't let anybody near them. They wouldn't even let them in the same building. Did they drop anything into those piles? Or did they do it later? Wait. There's no chain of custody here with them. Now a federal judge is telling the former president to back up those words with evidence. Court appointed special master Raymond Deary giving the Trump legal team a week to submit a list of items now in the government's possession that they believe were not actually seized from his home. He's really made it clear that they either have to put up or they have to shut up, but they can't keep making these claims without actually providing evidence to back them up. Earlier, he asked for more information about 100 sensitive government documents found at Mar-a-Lago. In public, Mr. Trump has implied he declassified them, but his lawyers haven't made that claim in court. It doesn't have to be a process, as I understand it. If you're the president of the United States, you can declassify just by saying um, it's declassified, even by thinking about it. A federal appeals court panel ruled Wednesday the Justice Department can continue using those seized classified documents in its criminal investigation. He can't have his cake and eat it too, as the court basically said. He has to come forward with evidence, or it will be assumed that they are classified information and that he has no right to them. Another setback for the former president as his legal woes continue to mount. The special master also gave the federal government a Monday deadline to certify that its inventory list of everything that was seized at Donald Trump's Florida property is accurate. In Washington, Chris Pallone, NBC News. An appeals court says that it does not matter if the former president did declassify those sensitive documents. The court says that they still belong to the government, not to a former president who is now a public citizen. In the war in Ukraine now, voting is underway on whether Russian-held regions of Ukraine should become part of Russia. The vote was organized by the Kremlin and has been widely denounced by Ukraine and the West as shams without any legal force. NATO has said they will not recognize the results. Experts think if the Russians win, they will use the results to annex the territories they currently occupy. Voting is set to run through Tuesday. Here at home, construction is starting today on the second leg of a trail that will connect people in 23 communities and four cities. Yes, including Detroit. The Joe Louis Greenway is a 27-mile biking and walking trail that will go from Detroit's riverfront to Highland Park, also to Dearborn and Hamtramck. The first section of the Greenway from Joy Road to Tyreman is almost finished. And today, crews started work on a half mile section from Grand River to Fullerton. It's expected to take about 10 years to complete the entire 23 mile project. And there is much more ahead here on Local 4. And this is what's coming up later today. Yes, here's a look at what our teams are working on for Local 4 News at 5 and 6.